Stuff is important, and I just rewatched some of those videos. So actually, it was Mike Suzowski. I just remember it started with an S. If that person is of interest and has not yet been arrested, it needs to be um. And then but the other thing about Ryan Thomas, who is the investor at um, Lola, it was weird. They didn't want to put me in the restaurant, but he wanted to put me um, in the pool house, and he stayed in a cabin right behind it. And then not only that, but he was the one that ran all of the electronic stuff there. But the most significant thing about that one is that um, when there was a scale thrown at me from somebody that had rented a cabin and um, she said she was afraid of her life, that it was a pharmaceutical rep and he had a whole suitcase full of medication and that she did not feel safe with him and she needed to get a safe way out of there as soon as possible. We found her a safe way out of there as soon as possible. But as soon as that went down, they tried to set me up with some little bag of molly that somebody, another raver, had left in a cabin. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Um, but it, I threw it in the garbage. Then I went and talked to the drug detective about it and said I'd like a drug test to show that I don't have this in my system. And he said, we don't do that here. But what I would do is go get one and document it thoroughly, photographically. And I did. And I was able to document it, that it showed that that was the day. That was the only one that went there just by myself and went and got that at Walgreens and did it right there at the bathroom. And I had nobody else in my presence. And I posted on Instagram. At that point, I'd been hacked by... Brian Thomas already and so my Instagram wasn't showing all of its posts and I don't even know if you can look it up I think that one was wings of bliss 888 I think that was the Instagram I was using at that point I don't know my stuff's really really hard to find because of the insane amount of cyber crime has been brought against me and <laughs> seeing that this cycle is all hung up on something that you know happened like after you know shortly after 2014 like I don't know how long I've been being hacked and harassed you know I'm not I, you know, I try to shock everything up to coincidence and I don't want to get all like crazy about stuff. Like, you know what I mean? But the thing is, it's became, it's become obvious. It's happened time after time after time. There's not reasonable log logical explanations about it. And it just doesn't match up with my character or what should be happening to me at jobs. Anyways. So what then that Ryan Thomas did, and he had a very weird schedule. He had a truck with spotlights on it. He would wear, um, you know, like, safety vests a lot and be up very late hours of the night they would have rave parties there someone would go missing they would get rid of all the staff they would replace them with all new staff there was a rumor about it which i was like eh, whatever i don't know until that actually happened and it was covered up by them and then i knew there was actually something to it so um so after that he did it called an emergency staff meeting where he recorded the meeting and then he said in this recorded meeting, a staff meeting, that he dealt with it, although he threw that scale up on the table. And I'm thinking in my head, you know, if he dealt with it, wouldn't the police have that in their evidence, you would think? So then I did it again, go talk to the drug detective up in Missoula, Montana about it. And they, he indicated that they were being watched anyways. Um... And then, you know, like, I don't know, I like closed, which was like three, four in the morning. I would volunteer an extra two hours to get that scummy place as clean as possible and not even get paid for the extra hours it took me to do the job right. Um, that's the kind of employee I am. And so, I don't know, he'd scheduled some meeting early in the morning where I was supposed to go have a one-on-one -on -one with them and I didn't show up. So they showed up at my cabin. He brought my check and said I had less than 24 hours to leave. Well, per their employee policy, somebody would have, I think, at least two weeks to leave. I had, there was another maintenance person that they let go of um, that actually was involved in substance and he had six weeks to leave. But me, I had less than 24 hours to leave. So it made it obvious and obvious and obvious and it confirmed the suspicions and um, I've been messed with hard ever since. And then it was immediately after that, that that Willow Creek job suddenly popped up and I went there. Oh, and the other thing about Lolo is they had brought in someone from Salt Lake who was a Mason and they had already, and, and it was interesting because when he agreed with that, we were in the bar talking about another dance party and I mentioned how I had brought my friends, Gabriel Schmidt and Enzymes in, in debut and Gabriel puffed up in the bar and they got kicked out and mentioned that I had known most of the police and detectives from my hometown of Butte, Montana. In fact, I went to Vegas with half of them. Um, and until the corrupt setup thing happened with that sergeant's son, I was very honored by them. 
you know, and I'm probably extra honored by some of them now, as soon as when this is all said and done, the truth comes out, you know what I mean? And the corrupt ones are gone and true justice is another step forward of being established anyways. So it was right after I mentioned that I knew a lot of the cops and detectives in Bew that Ryan, jo that Ryan Thomas, if that's even his real name, looked at the other manager and said, should we bring him in? And he was like, yeah, and nodded. So then this other guy comes in from Salt Lake it was a black guy and a Mason. And then I was gone and he, they had somebody in my position before I had the 24 hours to leave. So then I go up to, I go to Willow Creek, you know, hired no questions, place to live upstairs. Um, I had to go talk to the police because I was vomiting up my food, which was really odd. Um, you know, I would have like a couple shots of whiskey and I'm a beer girl. I can handle plenty of whiskey, you know, and I have a couple, a couple shots after work and I'd go sing on my balcony. Well, one night I, I felt this like strange, like I needed to not be out there. And, uh, there was something going on in the field over there. And I absolutely believe that I had something on me. Like uh, I was a target. And that was when I got Frank for something downstairs, although I was upstairs the whole time and it had something to do with a rock hitting the window and then somebody speeding off in a vehicle thereby kicking gravel up or whatever um it was a couple days after i had turned in that steven um for some abusive behavior concerning an animal and uh there was no way what they were trying to pin on me could even possibly have been me because I was upstairs the whole time. So I don't know what the heck they were trying to set up, but it was even a more miserable s setup than the one at Lolo. So it just seemed to be a pattern. And that's when I went and stayed home. I tried to apply for a job. And it was weird too about the Quinn Hot Springs thing is that they had offered me that job multiple times before. But yet somehow whenever they were supposed to call me back or email me back, I wouldn't get those emails and calls. Well, I had had my devices and accounts hacked by Ryan at Lolo and Mike at Willow Creek. And um, so, where am I with this? My head's ringing like crazy and being messed with because criminals are not happy about what's happening because the truth is finally coming out as it should. That's when I decided to get further away. There was, Nashville was pretty cool and it was all right until I worked at Bell and Clark. And I'm pretty certain that somebody named Maurice was messing with my phone and got my phone tagged and cloned and whatever there. I just remember looking at him being on his phone quite a lot by me and it just didn't feel right and it just didn't look right. And, uh, there was definitely some BMW that went down one night when my car got locked into the garage. But we finally got out and made it out of there in time to get back to our communal living by the curfew time and be okay to go back and flag some more. That video cut off. I just hope all this gets straightened out and connected and dealt with and uh, my life gets saved because I should have had, I have worked four temp shifts since not a single one of them are on my account. One is from, not last Thursday, but the Thursday before, where I did security at a football tournament for the Florida High School Association. And I worked like 13 hours and I'm owned 160. That should be in my account. As well as the first shift from the restaurant up there at the hotel. The temp agency, if they are behind some nefarious activity, they need to be investigated. They did cancel another security shift where I wouldn't have been in danger of overtime. If anything, it would have been half an hour and they could have let me go. So there's signs pointing to the fact that there's some something a little nefarious behind the temp agency that I'm working at. I was working at another temp agency, but the first time I went back, I got sexually harassed there. And it really, really, and it was right after that Mitski was in town and it really, really seemed I was forced to do stuff with somebody there. And it seemed like he brought me to a certain place and I'm absolutely certain it was being recorded. And I only like did the bare minimal to get out of there because I didn't know where I was. I was away from my car. I thought he was a friendly coworker and I, he was grabbing me lunch. And um, I was just trying to get out of it. Sometimes us girls, we have to like barely play along just for our own life's protection. So I removed myself from the situation. I didn't report it because I didn't want him and his gangsters following me around town here. I'm really trying to build a better life in Orlando, you know, 
but it's not fair that I have to go from place to place to place and work crappy temp jobs and that I'm not unable to like, you know, rebuild my life because I'm not being protected and somebody was called to protect me. I'm mister. Where are you, mister? Are you really that much of a non-man, mister? After I believed in you so much. I know somebody's been protecting me, but I really, really need some help because... My bank was covering stuff, but all of a sudden, now that I have four shifts that should be in my account, that would more than cover my rent, twice as much cover it. They're not there now. What's up with that? But I know somebody else has access to my phone, and I know there's a psycho that's uh, really mad and proposing crazy stuff on my page, so it's got to be connected, right? She's got the same initials as Mitski. I don't know. That's my best guess. That was just a logical connection of... A DJ that shows up on another DJ's page and a man and jealousy and the area I'm from in Montana and where stuff has happened and the types of crowds is connected to the electronica scene. I don't know. This is just the most information I can provide if there's any sort of evidence or any information that would help out if there is any workers of justice. I, you know, believe there are because I'm, you know, I really do believe I've been protected out there lately. And if there was some sort of setup, it didn't work because there's been plenty of them drive by me. They're around me all the time, you know, and uh, I don't mean harm to a single being on this planet. I can't even hurt a bug. I couldn't even hunt. One year, my dad tried to bring me hunting. And he had to get, give the gun back because I wasn't able to look into a scope and kill a, an animal. They're too beautiful. Um, I'll eat wild game because it's healthy. And if maybe if I was starving and to a point where I absolutely had to for food only, I would possibly do that. I had my medical care dropped by somebody that would actually kill a lioness. That also tried to file false reports because all of a sudden she wasn't going to do the Lyme labs that we talked about for years when I finally got the disability and the Medicare to finally get better. And then all of a sudden we had everything change in our world medically and politically. So I know I'm politically targeted as well, having told that story. You know that the medical industry, the big farm doesn't like me. Um, because I want the root causes of illness to be treated because I think it would be the very first thing that we could do to make America great again is to get the kids better. And I had a, a successful child care center and I loved working with kids and I was coming up with curriculum and it would have been something that I would have been traveling in the country doing trainings with and creating my own art curriculum for kids. And everything's got ruined in my life. And I should be extremely successful right now. And instead, I'm just being harassed by criminals. And they're able to get away with it. I just want to make up for lost time. I don't understand why criminals get to do whatever they want and run the world. It needs to be fixed. There's never going to be a safer, better tomorrow if it's not dealt with. And somebody, please help me. And somebody, please save my life. And somebody, please fill me in on all of this madness. I would really appreciate it because I've done everything I can on my own. And this person has been trying to interfere the whole time. And God knows how many years she's stalk been stalking me for. She's just bringing up stuff with an ex that I was engaged to in, from the years 2011 to 2014. I had no idea that he wasn't even living anymore. I don't know. I'm not a psycho-obsessed person like this person is, but somehow this psycho-obsessed person has been able to do it, cause so much damage in my life and commit so many crimes against me, and I just don't understand it. I would really appreciate it if anyone out there cared about saving a good person's life and helping me.